Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Ezra sat on the edge of the bed, staring at the open closet. Inside hung the outfits that felt most true, most real. The floral dresses, the soft pastel sweaters, the skirts that flowed so nicely in the wind. But they stayed hidden, tucked away in the dark while Ezra wore the expected shirts and jeans day after day. It hadn't always been like this. As a young child, before the walls went up, Ezra's innocent joy was plain on their face whenever they got to wear the shimmery dresses from mom's closet. Something about the way the fabric swished around little legs just felt right. One early memory stood out clearly. Mom had pulled out an old Halloween costume, a blue and purple fairy dress. Want to try it on, just for fun? She had asked with a playful smile. The pure delight Ezra felt the minute that satiny fabric slipped over their head was electric. Posing in front of the mirror, Ezra's eyes shone as they took in the magical creature looking back. For a brief, beautiful moment, the outside matched the inside. Of course, that moment was fleeting. The sound of Dad's key in the front door sent Ezra tearing off the costume, heart pounding. Dad didn't really like silly dress-up games. The fairy dress was stuffed under Ezra's bed in a panic. Ezra peeked out the door and saw Dad greeting Mom with a kiss. He looked handsome in his military uniform, but his stern demeanor always kept Ezra at a shy distance. With Dad, things had to make sense. He wasn't much for whimsy and make-believe. Later that night, when Ezra took out the fairy dress to admire again, the stitches under the arm had torn. The delicate fabric now sagged limply. Ezra's lip quivered, but no tears came. The magic was gone now anyway. Maybe it was time to put such things aside. In the years that followed, Ezra became an expert at keeping the outside appearance orderly and sensible, just as Dad preferred. But inside, the whimsy and softness remained, even when Ezra tried to push it down. It would peek through in small ways, like the time in first grade art class when Ezra spent all period carefully painting their clay figure's fingernails while the boys sculpted race cars and dinosaurs. Or the sleepovers with school friends when Ezra would beg to play dress up with the frilly nightgowns and heels, always disappointed when the other kids wanted to play video games instead. Ezra would secretly borrow mom's makeup and jewelry, imagining attending a glamorous party or performance. Though the outside remained plain, inside Ezra's spirit longed for beauty, harmony, softness. The most treasured secret was a doll Ezra had picked out at the store and smuggled home one day, hiding it carefully in the very back of the closet. Ezra named her Violet. With her gentle curls and sweet rose-colored dress, she looked the way Ezra felt. At night, Ezra would sit with Violet and share all the dreams and wishes kept so well hidden from the outside world. She seemed to understand in a way no one else could. The years of hiding and pretending weighed on Ezra more and more as middle school approached. One day, Ezra came home from school feeling especially low. Mom was baking cookies in the kitchen, and the comforting, familiar scent eased Ezra's spirits a little. Rough day, sweetie, Mom asked, wiping a smudge of flour off her cheek. Ezra just nodded, slumping at the table with a sigh. Well... How about we do a little baking therapy? Here, help me roll out this dough. Mom handed Ezra a rolling pin, sprinkling flour on the counter. They worked together, Ezra finding the rhythm of rolling out round after round of dough soothing. As they transferred the last batch into the oven, Mom studied Ezra with her warm, hazel eyes. You know, life doesn't always let us show our true colors on the outside. But the inside is what counts. Like these cookies, the dough starts plain, but once they bake up, you see all the chips and flavors that were hiding there all along. Ezra still kept up appearances, wearing the expected clothes and avoiding any girly interests at school. 
but at home, Ezra felt safe to explore interests like helping mom bake, watching makeup tutorials or romantic comedies while dad was working, and spending hours researching designers and glamorous fashion. Mom was endlessly patient and supportive, even when Ezra's interests puzzled her. When Ezra asked for a sewing machine one birthday, desperate to try making some of the lovely clothes seen online, Mom didn't bat an eye. She helped set it up and showed Ezra how to thread a bobbin and sew a straight line. Ezra's first attempts were shaky and imperfect, but each new skill felt like a small victory. Dad's long deployments helped too. With him gone, Ezra could embrace their favorite hobbies without judgment. Mom and Ezra would crank up happy music and dance while baking cookies or brownies for care packages. Laughter filled those days. The best therapy for both of them missing dad. Ezra longed to share every new interest with mom to help her truly see and know the person blossoming inside. But the words still stuck in Ezra's throat every time she tried. It was easier to just show her in small ways, grateful she never pushed when Ezra went quiet. Ezra sat cross-legged on the bedroom floor, biology textbook open in front lap. But the chapter on chromosomes and phenotypes lay forgotten as Ezra clicked through page after page online about gender identity. It had started with a simple Google search. Can you change from a boy to a girl? From there, Ezra tumbled down the rabbit hole of personal accounts, informational sites, and medical pages. Phrases jumped out. Gender dysphoria, transgender, hormone therapy, reassignment surgery. It was a lot to take in. Could this be the key to the tug of war Ezra had felt for so long? The sense that the outside never quite matched the spirit within? Maybe there was a name for it, a reason all along. The more Ezra read, the more everything started to make sense. The sound of the front door closing downstairs snapped Ezra back to the moment. The textbook was shoved under the bed and the computer screen switched to homework just before dad peeked into the room. Hey kiddo, how was school today? He asked. Fine, Ezra answered automatically. Dad meant well with his questions, but he still made Ezra nervous sometimes. Ezra just didn't feel ready to talk about this with him yet. The research would have to stay secret for now. Over the next few weeks, Ezra dove deeper, staying up late to read personal accounts of others' transitions and journeys of self-discovery. Though each story was unique, Ezra recognized the same threads, feeling out of place in one's own body, an affinity for interests and activities culturally ascribed to the opposite gender, the struggle to determine one's true identity below the surface. Ezra created an anonymous account online to ask questions on transgender forums, hungry for guidance. A kind user, herself a trans woman, suggested experimenting safely with different forms of gender expression. Start small and do what feels comfortable, she advised. Armed with new confidence, Ezra began subtly branching out. Shaving legs and underarms became part of the weekly shower routine. Following makeup tutorials led to concealing blemishes and playing with natural-looking lip glosses. Ezra even signed up for a cosmetology class at school next semester, despite some odd looks from dad about his son wanting to learn hair and makeup. The biggest temptation was Ezra's wardrobe. A trip to the thrift store yielded some neutral staples like sweaters and shorts that could pass as masculine or feminine. But the floral sundresses called out from the racks every time, their soft fabrics irresistible. Not yet, Ezra told self. Someday. Junior high's onset only intensified the growing divide between Ezra's inner and outer self. Changing alongside the boisterous, rowdy boys in P.E. class made Ezra want to disappear. Their raucous energy felt disruptive and intrusive. In contrast, Ezra's female classmates provided refuge. They accepted Ezra readily into conversations about clothes, crushes, and makeup tips. Here, Ezra could relax and relate without pretending. These friendships brought solace, even if the other girls still referred to Ezra as he, him, for now. Spring brought the first school dance. When Dad offered to take Ezra shopping for a new outfit, Ezra's heart leaped. 
this could be the chance to try something a little fancy, a baby step closer to self-expression. But in the men's section, surrounded by sharp suits and stiff button-downs, the words froze. Another time, Ezra told self. Someday. The night of the dance, Ezra lingered wistfully as friends tried on dresses and did each other's makeup. The girls reassured Ezra that the navy suit and tie looked sharp, but it felt like a costume. At least the graduation gown would be a neutral shape, Ezra consoled self. A dress for everyone. The yearbook meeting was a surprising bright spot. Under yearbook's supervision, Ezra discovered a talent for photography and an eye for design. Creating layouts and showcasing student life gave Ezra a voice. Maybe someday there would be a place in yearbook for more honest glimpses of inner lives too, Ezra dreamed. With graduation nearing, Ezra wrestled constantly with the biggest question of all. Share these inner changes with mom or keep them under wraps? Trust her unconditional love or maintain the status quo? She had always listened without judgment, but this felt scary and huge. The day before graduation, Ezra stood in front of the mirror, rehearsing words that never seemed to come out right. Mom, I need to tell you something. I think I might be... I'm pretty sure that I'm actually... No, too confusing. This needed to be simple and clear. Tomorrow in the gown would be the perfect time and place. A symbolic milestone. Just say it outright, Ezra told self, short and honest. Walking downstairs in cap and gown, Ezra took a deep breath. Here goes everything. The high school gym buzzed with hundreds of chattering families and students finding seats. Graduation day had arrived. Ezra fidgeted in line between classmates, grateful for the long, shapeless robe that felt safer than any outfit worn before. Beneath the gown, Ezra had covertly shaved legs and underarms, applied subtle makeup, and chosen a feminine undergarment, preparing mind and body for this pivotal moment. From the audience, Ezra glimpsed Mom waving excitedly, Dad's empty seat beside her waiting to be filled when he arrived from work. Ezra waved back, heart racing. This was it. The principal commenced proceedings, welcoming the sea of graduates. Student speakers covered friendship, change, and new beginnings. Ezra soaked up their words, a mantra repeating in mind, be honest, be brave. Too quickly, it was time to grab diplomas and exit the stage. Waiting in the wings for a turn, Ezra swayed anxiously. The gown swished around legs in a way that just felt so right, empowering. Ezra's row was called, each step towards the stage echoed loudly, though no one else could hear them. Be honest, be brave. The diploma was heavy in Ezra's hands, descending the stairs on the far side of the stage. Out into the audience, into the future unknown. Ezra sought out mom's face, ready now. Pushing through the crowd of graduates, Ezra made a beeline for mom and dad in the stands. Dad had arrived just in time from his shift at work to see Ezra cross that stage. They both stood beaming. Congratulations, kiddo. I'm so proud of you, Dad said, enveloping Ezra in a hug that lifted feet from the floor. He was always affectionate after long stretches apart. Ezra smiled through prickling tears. Thanks, Dad. As Dad set Ezra down, Mom wrapped both arms tight around her child. Her embrace anchored Ezra. I love you so much, sweetie, she whispered. So, so much. Ezra clung to her, letting the words slip out in a rush. Mom, I'm transgender. I'm your daughter. There was silence, but no letting go. Ezra squeezed eyes shut, dizzy. It was out. Finally, Mom spoke softly by Ezra's ear. I know, sweetheart. I've known for a while. The tears flowed freely now as they held each other. Dad stood silent, brow furrowed in thought. But right then, Ezra felt only Mom's unconditional love. Mom drew back first, wiping Ezra's wet cheeks with her thumbs. Her own eyes glistened. Come on, let's head home. Your favorite dinner is waiting, and we have a lot to talk about. 
She kept an arm wrapped firmly around Ezra's shoulders as they made their way out of the gym, Ezra's graduation gown swishing with each step. Mom kept her arm around Ezra's shoulders as they walked through the parking lot to the car. Ezra held tight to the diploma, fingers worrying the edge of the paper. Graduation day hadn't gone quite as imagined. Dad trailed behind silently. Ezra glanced back once and saw him scrubbing a hand over his face, brow still furrowed. He looked tired after a long shift. Maybe he just needed some time. At the car, Ezra slid into the back seat, letting Dad have the front. The ride home started quiet. Finally, Dad spoke up gruffly. So, Ezzy, this thing you said back there, that you're a, a girl now? He shook his head. You'll always be my son, kiddo. I know high school's confusing, but you'll figure it out. In the rearview mirror, Ezra met mom's eyes. She gave a little nod. Ezra took a breath. Dad, I have felt like a girl as far back as I can remember. It's not new. Dad shifted in his seat. Well, those are just feelings, right? Doesn't change the facts. His tone tried for gentle, but fell short. Ezra looked down, fingers worrying the diploma again. Mom reached over and squeezed Dad's arm. Why don't we all take some time to process this tonight, okay? Ezra knows we love her no matter what. Dad just grunted in reply, jaw tight. The rest of the drive passed in silence. Back home in the safety of the bedroom, Ezra let the tears come again. Today was supposed to be a celebration but Dad's reaction had cast a pall over everything. A soft knock came at the door and Mom peeked in. Can I come in, sweetie? Ezra nodded, wiping eyes on a sleeve. Mom sat and pulled Ezra close. I know that was hard. Give your dad a little time to come around. This is new for all of us. Ezra looked up. Is it really new for you, though? You said you've known for a while. Mom smiled softly, tucking a lock of hair behind Ezra's ear. A mother knows. I've seen the way your spirit lights up when you can embrace your true self, the talents and interests that give you joy. But it wasn't my place to push. I had to wait until you were ready to tell me yourself. A lump rose in Ezra's throat. I wanted to tell you for so long. I was just scared. I know, sweetie. Mom cupped Ezra's face in her hands. But you were so brave today. I'm glad you can start living as your true self now. Ezra managed a shaky smile. Thanks, Mom. After a pause, Mom stood and went to Ezra's closet, shuffling through the clothes. If you're going to live as a young woman now, you'll need the right wardrobe. She started pulling out the few feminine items Ezra had collected over the years. The silky pajama set bought in secret, a modest swimsuit, a simple necklace. This is a good start, but you deserve to feel beautiful every day in clothes that match your true self. Mom's eyes sparkled with happy tears. We'll go shopping this weekend, just you and me. Get some dresses, skirts, everything you've dreamed of. Ezra sprang up and threw both arms around her. Thank you, Ezra whispered into her shoulder, a little awed. Mom always knew just what was needed. True to her word, that Saturday, Mom took Ezra shopping while Dad was working overtime. She helped Ezra pick out a whole new wardrobe, flowy blouses, skirts in bright prints, dresses ranging from casual sundresses to a sophisticated black cocktail dress. You have such good taste, Mom said proudly as Ezra emerged from the dressing room in an outfit, twirling to swish the skirt. For the first time in forever, Ezra's outside matched the spirit within. At home, they stocked Ezra's bathroom with makeup and skincare items. Mom taught Ezra how to shape and fill in brows, line eyes expertly, and apply lipstick for a perfect pout. Sitting side by side at the mirror, Mom said, I used to imagine doing this very thing when you were young, though I wasn't sure we ever would. She squeezed Ezra's hand. Thank you for letting me be a part of your journey. Ezra beamed, leaning into Mom's shoulder. I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else. In the weeks that followed, Ezra embraced feminine rituals that had always seemed mysterious and unattainable before. 
shaving legs and underarms, painting nails in bright colors, styling longer hair into braids and ponytails. Each new accomplishment unlocked more of the person living inside for so long. Of course, dressing this way around dad was still daunting. When he was home, Ezra stayed in androgynous mode, but the freedom to fully express womanhood with mom emboldened Ezra to start coming out to friends. Reactions ranged from loving support to awkward politeness, but even tentative acceptance felt like a victory after years of hiding. And mom continued cheering Ezra on each step of the way, embracing the daughter she had always known. One night at dinner, Ezra finally broached the subject of a name change with both parents. I've been thinking about making my name more feminine, Ezra explained after pushing food around the plate in silence. Esme, it means to be loved, and I read it can be short for Esther. Esme glanced up to find dad staring intently at his plate, jaw clenched. But mom said gently, I think Esme is beautiful, sweetie. We can start using it at home if you'd like. Dad's fork clattered loudly as he dropped it on his plate. This is ridiculous. He shoved back from the table and stormed out, the back door slamming shut behind him. Ezra flinched. I'm sorry, honey, let me talk to him. Mom started to rise, but Esme caught her hand. It's okay, mom, I think he just needs more time. Ezra managed a shaky smile. At least I have you in my corner. Mom squeezed Esme's hand. Always. Weeks go by and Esme slowly starts living as a girl, even gets a job. Esme took a deep breath before pushing open the door to the coffee shop and walking inside. Today was the first day of a new job and the start of the next chapter. Mom had encouraged applying for the barista opening, saying it would be good for Esme to get work experience and earn some money for college savings. The owner, a former high school teacher of Esme's, hadn't batted an eye at the name change on the application. Excited for your first shift? An upbeat voice greeted Esme as the door chimed shut. Esme turned to see a smiling girl around the same age untying a green apron. Her name tag read, Sarah. Yeah, a little nervous though, Esme admitted. Sarah waved a hand. Ah, you'll pick it up quick. I'm just finishing up, but I'll show you the ropes before I head out. Esme followed Sarah behind the counter, listening intently as she pointed out where everything was kept. Cups, lids, milk, and flavor syrups. The high-tech espresso machines looked intimidating, but Sarah promised they just took some practice. Any questions so far? Sarah asked. I don't think so. It seems pretty straightforward. Esme was determined to catch on quickly. You're gonna do great, Sarah said. Oh, hey, there's one other thing you should know about working here. She leaned in conspiratorially. My older brother, Alex, he transitioned in high school too. So I just wanted to say, you'll always have an ally in me. Esme's eyes widened in surprise. It wasn't a topic that came up often. Oh, wow, thank you. I really appreciate that. Sarah smiled and gave Esme's arm a supportive squeeze. Of course, us girls have to stick together. She glanced at the time. Oops, gotta run. Tell Alex I said hey if you see him. With that, Sarah untied her apron and headed out the door, Belle chiming behind her. Esme took a deep breath and straightened the new green apron. Time to begin. Thanks for watching. Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.